Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to yang berbahagia Tan Sri Rafida Aziz, adjunct professor of Maniyabadullah Graduate School of Business, yang berusaha Professor Dr. Zelko Savik, the Dean of OYA GSP. Ladies and gentlemen, I bid you a warm welcome to today's OYA GSP Biz Talk, There to Change, Lessons Learned from Malaysian Political Tsunami and its Impact on Business Ecosystem. Ladies and gentlemen, without further delay, we would like to invite the OIGSP Dean, Professor Dr. Zalko Savik, to deliver his welcoming remarks. Well, I, I, I have been instructed to start like this. Uh, Rafida Aziz doesn't need any introduction. However, she was born. And then Rafida Aziz stands up, sits here, and pushed me down off the stage. <laughs> However, that was planned, uh, but nothing works as planned here, and this is why we have this um, very good discussion today. I would like just to welcome Rafida Aziz uh, with her re-engagement re with the UM, and this is her first uh, lecture, public lecture, for OYA as a graduate school. Now, without further ado, I would really invite uh, uh, Tansri to give us a presentation. And thank you very much for registering for this event, uh, helping us to understand how Eventbrite works and as well for attending the talk today. With that, Tansi Rafida, with no introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hello. No, no, it's okay. Only those who are interested will come, right? Especially when you're talking, they say politics, but actually I don't talk politics. We're just talking about something to me like, uh, <coughs> that has a, a political context to it. That's about it. <coughs> um, Professor Selvig, uh, members of the faculty in academia, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me here today. And I was quite surprised <coughs> when the topic was given to me. It's not really directly concerned uh, with business or management and so on, because normally when I come here, it's got to do with actual uh, business. Remember, cross-border business, blah, blah, blah. But it is quite refreshing in the sense that you want to be aware of what's happening around you. And uh, business happens in a very uh, challenging and ever-changing environment. So our environment within which business operates has just changed radically. So it is, I think, to be expected that you have to monitor what's going on. And perhaps from academia's point of view, if I was still in the academia, I would insist that the academia actually input into that process of change. Whether it is in the context of education, whether it is in the context of uh, having a business-friendly environment, uh, so business better be prepared. You know, not just have a seminar or <coughs> a talk like this, but get together and come up and pr uh, uh, propose to the government how you see uh, further changes need to be done or new things need to be in place. Transformation, I hate the way use transformation because some people transform from good to incredible hulk. So <laughs> are we seeing transformation, the green man, you know, incredible hulk, who knows no order. <coughs> so anyway, uh, it's quite relevant to my mind when you talk about this uh, in this uh, business environment that's different maybe later on as it evolves from what it has been the last 10 years but reminiscent of what was before in essence because as you know the r the peak of our economic uh, success was really pre uh, last decade uh, not because i happen to be there but for a fact we laid out the foundations of course not perfect perfection is god almighty but enough to say that that would have carried us on forward to the year 2020 uh, without much concern. But of course, in external environments do impact us directly or indirectly. And I've here been given uh, this topic, Dare to Change, Lessons Learned from the Malaysian Political Tsunami and its Impact on the Business Ecosystem. I've been very patient because everybody talks about the political tsunami. Wrong. Wrong. The change in government was not because of political tsunami. The change uh, that the people wanted by voting in a new government, the Pakatan Harapan, is not about a political tsunami. 
The change happened because of the tsunami of endless issues, problems and scandals. A tsunami, please get your context right. A tsunami happens when there's a huge tidal wave. And what results after the tsunami? Havoc. You have to pick up the pieces. You don't know how much damage has been done. And the picking up the pieces alone takes you years. I know. Alosta, remember? The real tsunami. I went to see cars almost up in the trees. Terbalik, terlentang. Right? I went to see the actual Penang. I went out to see the actual impact of tsunami. So the tsunami is not the rakyat voting, you know. Wrong. Get your perspective right. The tsunami is that wave of all kinds of problems that started God knows where. The tsunami doesn't start here. No, it, no, uh, so from uh, the first... Come, come. The first uh, years of the last decade, the semblance of tsunami came. Problems started. Scandals started. Diversion from good governance started. You can compile. I don't want to be compiling. You know more than I how much sins were committed. That was a tsunami. Not the people voting, you know. That was a tsunami. So when people saw that the tsunami has just come and there was ravages, then they said, we have to change the government. I don't know if any of you listened to my political rally talk. Yeah, I used that one. Very, I went everywhere and changed people's minds. It seems, they tell me, I don't know. That I said, hey, you have the power every five years at the most to change the management of your country. For the last 60 years, you were so kind to give the same government. Some of them led by different people. And then after that led 21 years. And then after that subsequently led by two others. And uh, you found that the last decade, the management was way from satisfactory. Right? Not what we expected. And uh, there were a lot of problems. So, that was what, in effect, was a tsunami. So when the people saw, my gosh, that tsunami of scandals and uh, uh, misgovernance and so on, has resulted in an awakening. So we should call it an awakening of the rakyat. Kesedaran, you know, suddenly, ay, Allah akbar. Memberian Allah, kita kata dulu. God-given leaders. Oh my God. I always argue, you know, I say, excuse me, what the hell are you, sorry. Are you saying God-given leaders? <laughs> Are you not God-given? Did your mother and father pluck you from trees? Each one of us is a God-given human being. What are Semua ni anugerah Allah. Think about it. I consider myself anugerah Allah to my parents. If I happen to be anugerah Allah to the country, well, too bad. I mean, I mean, too, I mean that's it lah kan? Tapi we are all anugerah Allah. I don't want you be sitting here. Right? We all will be dead at birth. Or in mother's womb. So how come somebody is anugrah Allah even for doing rubbish? So the people started rethinking lah. Of course, some people cannot think, so they're still thinking like that. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say that collectively, the majority of the people had this awakening. Kesedaran, Masha Allah. Apa dah jadi ini? What's happened? The tsunami has just passed. On and on and on it came. But never mind will change the management. Now, the management is now about to pick up the pieces. Lah. Of course, they made a mistake of... If I had any say, I would have said, Tol, tolong lah, why you want to put 100 days? You know, these Malaysians are already impatient, you know. Uh, they get married, like tomorrow they want a baby. <laughs> kan? Not married, also they want a baby already. You see? If anybody asked me, I would have said, hey, don't put any 100 days, you know. 100 days pass on just like that. What can you do in 100 days? Even counting the jewelry pun take more than that. <laughs> huh? No, I'm serious. The maknanya, after the tsunami, the picking out the pieces through as well, the awakening is the one that now we're talking about. So to me, we are talking about, first of all, what did that uh, tsunami comprise of? I already mentioned all the misdemeanors, blah, blah, blah. I call it one word, like misdemeanors. But was the, what was the impact? The impact was loss of confidence in governance, loss of confidence in some of our institutions and systems, and that feeling of shame for being Malaysians by some, among some people. Do you realise? 
materialize the young. Tell me, my Facebook and everywhere, when I have conferences like this, <coughs> uh, seminars like my young people, I do this without media. I don't like media. You know why? They they don't they only quote you. I'm talking to the audience. I'm not talking to media. Misa kata. So. They said, I'm ashamed to be a Malaysian. When I go abroad, I tell them I'm from Singapore, from Brunei. I say, shame on you. No, no, no. You laugh. My answer is shame on you. You should be saying, I'm proud to be a Malaysian, but I'm disgusted with those who govern the country. There's a big difference there, right? Think serious. You must tell these young people, what is it that they should be feeling what is it that they're angry about? Not angry about the Malaysia. Malaysia is a country. Not malu about our country. For God's sake, it's a blessed country, you know. You go and stay somewhere, you want to come back home, right? You do postgraduate. Allah nak balik, raya nak balik. Eh? Correct not? You go to some God for second place in Africa, you want to come back immediately. <laughs> not I'm serious. Huh? Not because we look down on them, but life is difficult. We don't have here, how difficult can life be here? You tell me. Whatever it is, is a blessed country. Unfortunately, the governance had gone haywire. And so, you don't have to be ashamed of being a Malaysian. I'm proud to be a Malaysian. However, now put things right. The way that the country is being governed is far from satisfactory. So, I tell these young people, that's the way you should be answering people, you know. Don't go and add on to say, and the people say, yeah, la, your country is so shameful. La. You like to hear that? No. If you're a true Malaysian, the last words you want to hear from outsiders. Right? So don't like, plant that idea into people's head. You know, my country no good. Correct? If the house is such a palatial home, you don't jaga. The housekeeper is lousy. The father, mother lousy, tak jaga rumah. Tikuih all over. Do you want to say the house no good? Ah? No, the house is perfect. But you who look after the house don't know what you're doing. That was my message. And so this awakening, and it's, a, it's also you analyze what was, what did this tsunami uh, comprise of? Apart from all that, the impact, for example, the governance that, that I saw, I can see, I can say that I can see because I started in government in 76. In 76, I started being in government. I started being in politics way back. I was only 22. I'm 75 now. So in other words, 50 plus years of my life was in politics and in government. So I could see. I'm one of the few. Lah. Most of them had died already. <laughs> okay? And some of them really retired. I don't go into the mosque, they got to I don't know what they do. Lah. But I'm still giving talks. And you find that Okotun, well, he retired 15 years, remember? Get good rest and he come back, lah, refreshed, rejuvenated. <laughs> but <laughs> we all can see what transpired along the way. And we can see that, my goodness, this is not what it's all about. And so when the erosion of confidence happened in every area, as a result of all these issues, there is a restlessness in the country that you can sense. And of course, there was also that apa namanya, uh, lack of confidence by people who want to do business here. Are you there for the long haul? Are you there to help to govern, to make our businesses uh, prosper? In fact, I was shocked. The companies like Samsung closed down. Do you know that Samsung, one of the biggest operations in Malaysia, I opened the factory. Tutup. And so did many others. It's just that there was no publicity. Okay? That doesn't mean they didn't close down. In fact, the officers tell me, oh my God, you know the companies that we took so much trouble to bring here as compared to going somewhere else, because we were competing, they just closed shop. Because they couldn't, um, couldn't say the headquarters kata, I don't think you should stay in Malaysia lah. You don't know where your future is. Put it that way, simply kan. That they see no future for them here. They go somewhere else. Everybody waiting for them, you know, to relocate. Of course, not much publicity. But if we have more publicity, lagi lah teruk erosion of confidence, right? So, we find that all this add on to what the tsunami comprised. And then you had the politicization of every issue. That I cannot tolerate. Of course, being politicians, people who make up the government will politicize, lah. Okay, but politicize for the better. 
not politicize in a divisive manner. You Melayu, you China, you India, you Kadazan, you Iba. No way. Go waving around. I see your grandfather was from India. I say, excuse me. I want to ask every one of you. Did you know? Do you know who your ancestor was in the year 1650? Tahu tak? Bergantung pokok mana kita tak tahu. I don't know. 1650. Do you know who? Where they are? What they were? Were they dressing dress like you? They are probably in loin cloth. Kok ada loin cloth? Kelanya bogel kok. Bergantung kat gayut kat pokok mana-mana tak tahu lah. I'm from Sumatra. I'm sure, you know, in 1650, my ancestor not exactly dress up macam sekarang lah kot. Some northern part of Sumatra, right? So, you see how people politicize even ancestorship, ancestry. And China, pendatang daripada China, Masya Allah. Tak pernah balik pun ke China. Why you school, why you talk like that? I have a feeling even my ancestors from China. Kau tengok arwah mak saya, putih melepak. Ah, ini kau apa? Who's probably from uh, India, uh, India apa? Indian subcontinent. Nama my great-grandfather was Korbu. Oh, nama apa tu? Korbu. Look at the photograph. My God. For sure, 100%. Ada Kerala mana. But that doesn't mean anything to me. No. I don't believe that. that that's a fact. Right. But I am Malaysian. My parents are Malaysian. That's more important lah. Nak pergi ungkit my grandfather pasal apa? I'm serious. So if you all begin to think like that, then we don't see ourselves as away from being Malaysians, correct? We're Malaysians. I always say, stomach ache for Malay, Indian, Chinese, same. The dengue mosquito don't even say, Asha but him, I don't know. He's from Indian ancestry, tak tak? I want to find one with a pass membership. Ada? The dengue mosquito. No, no. I nak pergi cari orang harapan. Um, pekatan. No, nak pergi cari orang Barisan Nasional. No, they thought I could nice. So in other words, in pain, in joy, we are all Malaysians. Now, when you have policies that divide people, policies for instant gratification, I've always against that brim. My God. I was I was the last term of MP as MP in government. I mean as MP, not in government. When the brim came out, I questioned, apa benda brim ni? And then when I query, my driver didn't get the brim. He qualifies. He didn't get the brim. The last election, the last brim, I said, am I dapat the brim? Tak ada. Saya pergi dia minta surat nikah. Dapat surat nikah, dia kata, this is depan biji mata saya ni, uh, Majid. Uh, dia kata surat nikah saya tak sah. Anak dia masuk sekolah. To deny him his brim. So who's getting the brim? This guy who qualifies under whatever criteria, dia kata tak sah. Rupanya dia pergi Air Asia punya driver semua, same story. Dia, uh, tu dia kata, pergilah dekat apa ni, Majid Gama Islam. Pergilah kawan ni kasyak alam ke mana ke. The, the the person dia tanya, ini pasal brim ke ni? Rupanya dah banyak datang bawa kad surat nikah ni, tolong sahkan. Ah, kita sudahlah maruah, hilang maruah you nak minta berapa kerat duit tu kan? Tak payah nak pergi sahkan surat nikah apa semua kerana dapat duit macam orang sedekah lah kan? Sudahlah tu. Tak payahlah majid. Tak payah. Saya lah bagi brim, senang. Ah, ikhlas. No, seriously. Malu dia tau sampai surat nikah nak pergi verify nak dapat berapa ribu seribu lebih ah. Aku tak tahu apa. So that kind of policy has resulted in people right down there being not happy. Now you must remember that's a cumulative uh, apa namanya concern, cumulative uh, unhappiness that goes. Of course you must remember we're talking about different levels of society. Many of us say may not feel the pinch. When you go that down there, people like say my driver, to him, it is like, why are you depriving me? You have so much of this talk, but yet I'm not getting it. Everything is not right. Even my marriage certificate. So I am saying this, when you politicize every issue, polarization occurs. And polarization, I think, is the antithesis of Malaysia. The moment you're polarizing, xenophobia comes in. You know very well what xenophobia is all about. I went to your country. Just after the war, I saw the massive destruction in Croatia. 
everywhere. I went to splits up in the mountains where the Askar was. And I prayed to God Almighty, never have this kind of thing in Malaysia. I don't think we can take it. So I've seen this in uh, uh, Bosnia have Herzegovina dulu, yeah? I've seen that the same repeat in Lebanon. I saw where there was war-torn country I have been first hand. And it frightens me when politics results in divisiveness. Of course, it starts with a little protest, red shirt, blue shirt, yellow shirt, or whatever. But don't forget, human apani. So to me, the general discontent became pervasive. And so that to me was the tsunami, not the voting. And cumulatively, all this resulted in people saying, we need the change. Not because they dare to change, because they said it is imperative that we change. Dare to change is like, eh, tak berani, tak berani. No, 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 it's no longer berani, tak berani. It is like, we must change. So the imperative is to change. I'm just changing the topic so that we see it in perspective. And the maknanya, the pressure of the tsunami and this after effect has caused people to make that decision to bring change. And Alhamdulillah, it is now. They've had enough. Lah. So when we talk about uh, the, the change after the tsunami, it is a process that must, must take time. This you must tell the private sector and business. For example, some rebuilding is, being take, is taking place of the systems, of the structures, governance culture, which to me is essential. The governance culture has changed so much now. It's governance by consultancy, governance by slogans. In effect, nothing much happening. Yeah? What... Uh, what is that? Apa ni do? I can't even understand the words. Apa tu pagi? Allah KPI. Everything is KPI. The ministers the KPI is what to attend cabinet meetings. Crazy. I was on a <coughs> Europe Malaysia forum. We had a big do in Vienna. We called in people in Europe who is, who are in the new uh, technology, the big green technology business. So we asked, or I wrote to the minister then, Peter Chin. I was no longer in government, but in this forum. I said, Peter, please come. We managed to get 22 uh, big timers in uh, green technology. And they're willing, they're now thinking and willing of it to invest outside of Europe. We'd like them to come to Malaysia because you have incentives. I'm not in government. I mean, what I say, I mean, a whole water, lah, put it that way. You can confidently say yes, no, whatever. Okay. But he didn't realize that that morning, we have the, the big session machine. Then in the late afternoon, we are going to have him sit down with the 22 people. One on one like that, again. Yeah? He told me, Rafida, I cannot stay. Lah. After the lunch, I said, excuse me? Why do you cannot stay? Oh, I got to go back cabinet. Eh, but you know this one, you know, we already told you. I know about my KPI. That's how I knew. I said, what do you mean your KPI? Our KPI is to attend cabinet meeting. What? If your job involves you going out to get investors from overseas, macam mana nak fulfill KPI kan? So in other words, you just warm your seat and that's already KPI, marketing attendance. You see? It's KPI ni. And then SOPs. Wah, SOP ni pun kena banyak eh. I don't how this this university don't do this SOP syndrome. SOP panjang, but nobody even reads what the SOP let alone understand. So I went around saying, I know you have a lot of SOPs, but when SOBs try to implement that or don't operationalize it, the SOPs don't make any sense, don't make any sense. It took a while before you laugh. What more the young people? Tak faham pun SOP apa? You know, in my frustration, you and your SOPs, but the SOBs try to operationalize it. Betul tak? Okay, and now I see. Baru dia okay. What happened in secondary? I can time you. See how the reaction? Ah, you see, not fast enough. Now, what I'm saying is that this happens at the micro level, but this is symptomatic of how the governance was. Governance by, governance by printing, governance by action plans, blueprint, you name it. The are blueprint, green print, I don't know what print. I said, what are you talking about? A, a nice, big, massive words. You know, words that sound so big. And as a result, you are really not 
really in in touch with what's happening on the ground. You're far removed from the operations of business. And the business people tell me, they think I'm still minister. Come to my house and not tell me. You know, the four months we write to the whoever, whoever, no response. How can that be business-friendly environment? Here you are talking about businesses to do this and they cross-border, blah, blah, blah. Even to do business here, four months, no, no response. And ambassadors, I'm sorry, I have to tell you this. Ambassadors, come to me and say, you know, I've been here three years plus. I'm due to go home. I haven't been given a call on the minister to say hello. Huh? What is this? And it's without exception. Every ambassador. I said, what? Dulu ambassadors from overseas come. First jumpa foreign minister. Second jumpa PM. Third jumpa MIT minister. Because we have to attract investments and, and do trade, right? So these three name in the... Apa ni Presidio punya Ini foreign minister Tak jumpa Dah nak balik dah I said what are you talking about You didn't say hello No you want to say goodbye I wish I can say goodbye I haven't got yet So I was arranging Actually Helping them To go and pay Farewell call Farewell call Now Why do I bring this up That's what I mean About governance Tadi tu Some dislocations In governance So it's impacting A lot of people Impacting our bilateral relations Impacting our own uh, apa ni, Capacity to do A lot more business And economic linkages With others Because the ambassadors Are actually the The Apa nama Link man right If he or she Don't know what's happening read, Apart from reading the papers Macam mana dia nak Advise chambers of commerce Back home Correct and so this cumulatively actually result in the governance culture needs to be changed now. Has to be changed. And then you have the economic government governance. We have to focus now on key areas of economic governance. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the government is doing, and they should continue to do, parallel tracks of action. <coughs> One, identifying the causes of the tsunami. You know, the havoc. Secondly, identify what havoc has been left behind. Apa yang rosak. Thirdly, remedial action. Uh, this is now being done. Uh, I'm sure uh, if you ask any of the ministers, this is what they are uh, actually attacking. And that, that's the line. Oh, nee. And then evaluate the cost. Evaluate the uh, what measures in the terms of future gains for the country and for the people short term macam okay lah kita tak nak buat tu tak nak buat ni kan to announce not necessary that he's going to say tomorrow stop review kalau the whole cost is far outweigh the benefits why continue if there's room for negotiations why not renegotiate so that we can get advantage of the project and make sure it is really beneficial ah dulu dah eh never mind uh, 60 billion, no problem. Uh, we promise to pay you every month. Whether you work or not, timeline. It's like you building a house and then you tell the contractor, okay, the house costs a million, katalah kan? So every uh, one month or every two months, I pay you. Whether you work or not, tak apa. I pay you every month. I say, I would love to be a contractor too. For 18% work, you already paid almost 80% of the cost. Now you have to renegotiate that, right? Uh, so that's what you see now. But of course, all one-liners lah. Uh, the government is not going to tell exactly what they're going to renegotiate. But trust me, this is how they're approaching it. Damage done. So how to renegotiate? What to renegotiate? And how long will it take? And the other party must be consulted. Kalau salah-salah negotiate kan, dia slap black court order kan. You know, hey, you promise your agreement. You have to see the watertight agreement macam mana. So people who are really serious about participating will go back and, and renegotiate. And most of them are China companies. I wouldn't say Chinese. China companies. You know what I mean? Probably they can be asked to come and renegotiate. Lah. So that's what the government is doing in terms of the solutions. And most importantly, before uh, uh, moving forward, <coughs> you have to build up the nation's resilience. For me, it's a very a big concern of me because you know, the economic environment is full of headwinds. Now, with a trade war looming, triggered by Trump, it's scary. In some areas, we may benefit because you know they cannot buy soya bean, they cannot buy any. They come and look for alternative like palm oil. But it is disconcerting because 
how come you know you t- quit, uh, quit pro quo, tit for tat? It never happened before. Now involving everybody, China. You know, you're talking about giants uh, treating each other like that. And Malaysia must have the economic resilience, the headwinds that's going to uh, harm our long-term uh, economic prospects. So this government will have to face that. There's no two ways about it. While uh, remedial action is taken, moving forward, we have to strengthen economic resilience. It really takes um, the kind of economic planning and strategizing and negotiations at regional level, for example, for regional resilience. Uh, fortunately, we are. We have been involved in RISEP, we have in IRIA and all that with the Japanese, with the Chinese. So there's a bit of room for us to maneuver because these are all our partners in the regional integration. So for us, we're a bit lucky in that sense. But then, you know, we have to be active. Lah. You know, we have to be active. Our officers will have to be up to, uh, apa nama, up to speed. You can have officers who cannot talk English. I'm sorry. Right. Who's KPI, AC, no. Attend meeting je. I'm sorry. You must have officers who understand the subject matter, can vocalize in English. Ini Allah statement by Guan Eng in Chinese pun saya bok. You see how perverted we are? When I was leading trade missions, when I went to Germany, German translator. I go to Taiwan, Chinese Mandarin translator. Go to Japan, I don't care how much Japanese can understand English. English, Japanese translator. French, you know why? I don't want them to misunderstand. At, at least in their language, they can comprehend. You know, these are all technical things that we are offering them. Tax allowance, macam-macam kan? Kan selit silap, dia kata monthly allowance pula keluar. I mean, who don't, who knows kan? Dia faham macam tu. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm serious. So, we have to understand context. And of course, when you come parochial, uh, dia lah kata, when you politicize everything, a statement that was in Malay, translated into English and Mandarin, become hot issue. Now, what sense is that? We're talking to the big Chinese giants, you know, so that they do not get interpretation salah. Oh, nak bahasa, bahasa mana? Bahasa mana kabau? Oh, bahasa mana? Bahasa Kedah. Even talking to Kedah people, you got to talk carefully, right? Kelantan lagi teruk. Because accent is so different. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not standard pun. So, the world is even more multilingual. So, we have to address them correctly and make sense. So, if you're addressing the Chinese, speak Chinese pun tak apa. I wish I could, you know, speak Chinese so that I can understand what the Chinese thoughts are in China. Betul tak? Here you attend meeting, dia cocang-cocang-cocang, kita tak faham. Memang our, Malay, our Chinese Malaysian tak faham, no? It's a bit Mandarin, right? Eh, you can tell me lain. I say, eh, you understand what the fellow is saying? No lah. I'm Malkian. I say, then how? Cannot. But if uh, written, okay lah. Written kan? Baku. China baku. Ya, yeah, kawan tu Mandarin. Dia yeah, bolehlah sikit-sikit sana sini. But taklah faham sangat. Nak pergi mana? Mana ada dalam bahasa Malaysia pergi mana? I mean, you know what I'm trying to say? So, we have to be now practical about moving forward. No more of this nonsense of being xenophobic, of being parochial. You know why? We're doing business with people. Yeah, workers. You don't expect workers to be, oh, I'm happy, I'm Malay, you know. I will speak Malay. Even the Japanese can't understand the word of Malay. You can if you want to work with him, you have to learn English so he can communicate with you, not show off. I'm Malay. I am uh, what? Championing Murtabat, my bahasa. Murtabak ada. Sometimes, this is where we have to teach now for the future. This is school of management. Please pay attention to the reality of life. Malaysians are now very polite people. They won't tell you they don't understand. They won't tell you that they don't even know half of what you're saying. They assume, you, and don't assume that the moment they're writing something that they faham, you know. Excuse me, moi. No. They tak faham. But they are, we are very, very nice. Except Rafid Haziz lah. <laughs> uh, most people are very polite. Balik tak, what is, apa dia cakap tu? Tak faham. Malah nak bertanya. If you don't faham, ah, a lecturer. Right? And no, politeness will not get you anywhere. Alright? 
Ha, tapi dalam polite-polite tu dia boleh kata kapal bapak. Dia boleh kata, you know, that kind of thing. Dia kata meroyan, nenek kebayan, what not kan. Ha, tu polite tu. But to ask facts like this, that they cannot, cannot. Everything must be Malay. So, this sound very small, but this has symptomatic of how uh, the country will evolve in the future. With that sempit mentality, that small-mindedness, we won't get very far. And then we also have to ensure that the government continues to create what I call the facilitating and uh, supporting environment for business. Uh, state government, local government, federal government. So, in fact, I did say very strongly uh, that we must become more and more business friendly. Because today, the economic environment is full of challenges. In the globalization process, I mean, you can talk three hours of globalization. Enough to, to say the globalization process, while it can benefit us, also brings a lot of challenges as we go on. And unless we help the private sector to overcome this, no matter how much management expertise they have, won't do. Because the textbooks don't tell you about all these things. It's got to be faced in real life. And then we have also <clears throat> the need, if we were to really uh, make sure Malaysia is competitive, to prioritize the culture of meritocracy. I'm sorry, I, I am one of those from young who believe in meritocracy. You don't merit it, you don't get. No two ways about it. I, I must say that in emphasizing meritocracy, it is to be color blind, it is to be gender blind. Not men and women, not Malay, Chinese, Indian, no. Malaysians, the best of Malaysians. Whether men or women, that's not your problem. It's what that person can add value. Now, for me, I can say that because I practice it. But will this be the culture of Malaysia? Will there be pressure in the politics where it takes two or three people to say loudly, oh no, we must make sure the Malays, oh, Mr. Kata, or the Indians, or the Chinese, in that kind of tone lah. No, the country loses. What do you get a dumbo for? It doesn't matter what race, a dumbo is a dumbo, right? You know what's a dumbo? Dumb lah. <laughs> I add the word O lah kat situ, dumbo. Kan? Dia tak berguna. He's useless. She's useless. Why take? Why? It doesn't add value to the organization or to the university or to the country or to society. You take the best, be color blind, be gender blind. The country benefits eventually. Now we have to have that culture in Malaysia. But we all, especially academia, must come up and be that, you know? Just because you want to go make more Malays nampak successful, you go and change the curve. You know, lah kan? Curves can be changed. Why? Kerja bodoh tu. That's the most stupid thing to do. You adjust the curve in order to show a lot. You low down, lower the standard in order to allow more uh, dumbos to pass. During my time, they don't care. You don't pass, you repeat. If you don't pass by some marks, you refer. I remember you two. I don't know about it still now or not. Now nobody wants any students to be seen to refer. Ah, damn. There you are. That's what I mean. That's a stupid. Stupid. Very, very stupid. Oh, our time, you refer. I don't care if I hold half the class refer. They got to be taught properly, right? You don't let them go and pass. When he marries an F and you still give a C. Gila punya kerja. He's going to run amok, you know, when he, he works in the government or wherever. <coughs> yeah, you kena. Yeah, you have to explain to the Senate. Exactly. I know. <laughs> Because the good lecturers come to me to complain, directives from this institution, that institution, and just so that everybody is seen to be good, great. I in our kawasan, my kawasan Kuala Kangsa, I told all the headmasters and headmistresses, don't you ever dare 
be ashamed if many of your uh, students fail. It's not your fault. Jadi ada kan cemerlang. Yang ini comot. Pasal apa? Pasal mak tak jaga. Parents don't care. So the child is not being motivated in the house kan to study. Masa um, anak nak study exam, mak pergi buka TV. Uh, opah dululah. Apa opah lah buat program kan. Kikit-kikit ketawa. Anak nak study in the room. Habis tu belajar, habis belajar. Very simple message. And then, bila anak tu fail, pergi jumpa MP. I don't come and see me lah. Anak bodoh pasal apa? Don't come and see me. I'm no sympathy for her. For the child father. Because it's the culture that says we can do things, you know. To put it, get a better picture. You know what I'm trying to say? Kita ubah suai lah supaya nampak elok. Kan? Rupa boleh dicantikkan. Oh, tu dia. Kan? Kan? Advertisement. Buka yang hitam macam saya boleh dimelepakkan. Rambut yang kereteng macam ni boleh diluruskan. Semua boleh diatur. Bisa diatur, Pak. That mentality is going to kill this country for the next generation. So, institutions of higher learning must create that meritocracy, uh, apa namanya, uh, culture. Begins from here, in education. Sekolah, okoh lah. Must start. But I'm saying this is really where they're going out to the market. It's sad for this country or any country for that matter when the young are being told you can actually short circuit the procedures to show excellence. Oh yeah, that's what happened, right? An F student will be suddenly a C. KFC. No, you laugh, but think about it seriously. And you have to be brave to make sure that those things don't happen where you are. I tell this, I, can, I talk all the time to people. And they're very worried because we want to be ranked good. Oi, let it be real ranking lah. Right? Jangan rank di... Ini macam main golf lah. Ini boleh play golf ya? Ah, tak ada, susah cakap lah. I play golf with men. Rupanya penyangak. Menipu. Ha? Dia punya handicap always very high, very low. You know, double, kita pandai lah main kan. Rupanya nak maintain double tu, the score is always manipulated. Go to the drain, not counted. Caddy put back. I call the caddy. Don't do to me lah when you're playing with me. Eh, tak, just now dia punya masuk. Masuk tapi dia ni biasa main macam tu. Okay, let me see next one. Same story. Call the partner. Oi. Partner, you're cheating. I don't want to play now. I'll stop playing now. Unless you tell him to stop doing that. After that, the game. Broom. Normal lah. Normal game lah. Instead of birdie, jadi 8, 7. You know, because that's his standard. But he wants to maintain the 12. He should be actually 21. So he has to cut by 9. Now, this is the culture that started with this... Um, uh, what do you call this? Apa nak panggil? Silap mata. Um, uh, no, no, let's not talk. This is a culture. Symptomatic. So, these people become leaders one day, you know. Berebut jadi leader. They're not, they're not leadership quality. Leadership, leadership doesn't cheat. Leadership is integrity and honesty. Leadership is not post. Leadership is the person. Tapi in this country and anywhere else, leadership is the post. So they berebut, use money to get the post. So that I am a leader. Only Kim In Il Jung lah, leader. Like that way kan? Otherwise I kill you. Habis cerita lah. No money politics there, life politics. So, if you don't start stopping this and uh, place a priority of meritocracy, I worry. Because the business people will want to look for people that can add value to their businesses. And you have substandard managers, substandard uh, corporate people, kan? They lose confidence. Kata Malaysia, don't come lah. Those people don't understand basics. Of course, they come up from Oyap lah. But <laughs> they just, I don't know what you call yourself lah. <laughs> Oya, oh, whatever. Panjang. Akan tahu apa benda nama bapak semua nak ambil ni. So, I'm just saying, textbook lain, reality lain. Betul tak? 
textbook lain Realiti lain So This to me Is very important Meritocracy from now on And it is so important That these people uh, Are planted That idea of meritocracy From young Unless we do this Goodbye Okay Then the next one is A culture that places National interest Upon everything else I actually mooted The idea of Supremacy of the nation No supremacy of any race What is so special About the Malays What is so special About the Chinese Or India Whatever lah We are special Because we are Malaysians Why? Because Malaysia Is a land of diversity So let's make This diversity Our source of strength Not divisiveness You know You cannot sit here because you're here. No, they have to learn. We can look. We can do it now. We can together. We can do. I don't know. I come from the old culture. We never saw each other. Anything. Dulu no Malaysia pun. Tak nak layu aja. Nothing to call Malaysia. After sixty five, then we had Malaysia, right? And then sixty three. Sorry. And then we we became Malaysian. So happy. But today, my goodness, separate. Dulu di Pabali we visit each other. Chinese New Year we visit each other. Of course Hari Raya tu definitely lah. Christmas we visit each other. Today Christmas and I'm Christian. I study in convent of the Holy Infant Jesus. Oh the uh, Roman Catholics are the only people who are Christians who are allowed uh, to have all uh, statues. Yang lain tak ada. We have stone statue of Jesus of Mary everywhere. Didn't make any of us Christian. We just say, yeah, they're Christian. So what? They go for mass. We go for moral class. They go for retreat. We go for study class. You know, they have their own catechism. They have catechism. Now we go and attend something else. Lah. They have, in other words, recognition of our differences. A scripture. They don't put us uh, out. Because scripture ni For non-Roman Catholics pun Okay And so I sat next to a, a, a Christian girl Scripture ni is by heart It's like tafiz lah I don't know whether they understand What they're reciting It's like our tafiz lah kan Dia faham tak faham Cerita lain lah Bak dongeng Dia da, dengang apa Dengeng dongeng Semua betul lah uh, Igram Idram Semua betul lah Tapi faham tak tahu lah Betul tu cici kan But ini I hope dia faham And so when Christians Once a, once a week uh, scripture. By the time one term over, saya I can actually I already by heart the scripture. Because I listen, <laughs> you know I I had almost photographic memory when I was young, and then my my friend here took the scripture as a study uh, subject. You know, once you take it as a study sub, sub, study subject, it's difficult to absorb. You know, your you, attitude is different. I took I listen to it as an interesting thing. Therefore, art thou good book the lah kan? So when this girl gets stuck, she's asked to recite this part. I cannot stand. Here I'm doing my work. I prompt her. And the nun will say, Rafida, stop prompting her. It didn't make me Christian. I'm trying to make... Oh, nowadays, if you make that in class, scripture, anywhere. Tomorrow, Menteri Besar, Menteri Education. We we'll get in the firing squad, right? Firing line, correct? And end of the year, Christmas time, Christmas pantomime, Christmas carol, nyanyi, me, so no, didn't make me Christian. Nah, think about it. So we have to change this mindset, like excess baggage. This is 2018, not 1918. In Saudi, the women can drive already. In Saudi, already the women have been told, take off your hijab. Kita kat Malaysia pula berhijab. Imagine. Eh, Saudi, no need to wear hijab anymore. Dia hitam, tu kan? Macam belum gagak semua tu. Actually, we don't even know the inside to gown. You try and go to their house, which I do. Ma oi, ha, baju dia. I pula pergi dengan my staff macam dayang-dayang pasal lena mayang. Baju kurung, takut orang harap kan. Oh, dia ni buka abaya. Ha, skirt. Ni. Kan jaket ni, skirt yang macam ni bawah tu kan. 
Dina Ricci lah kaya What? Macam tu lah Ni Pearl Ni ma. Mak-mak dia pun Mak ha. Mak eh pun tak pakai Yang kita ni tengok gambar je Semua hitam Itu culture dia Nak raja dah kata No more Take it off Bayar Kita pula buat Kita tengah biji mata je We even interpret wrongly our religion You pray to God You cannot cover your face Betul tak? In fact, you're more scared of this man lah than your God. God kata, jangan tutup. Kan? Tak sah kalau pergi umrah, pergi haji boleh tutup. Tak boleh. Yang kita nak tengok man ni, ha, tengok Slavik. Tinggal biji patah dua. You're afraid more of him than God. See how we misinterpret? So, ke mana nak pergi budaya kita? And you expect the business people to say, oh, come to Malaysia. Dia very open minded Alah dia kata tengok Tak pula kan tak boleh pakai pula pakai glove Tak boleh salam Allah Why Why Niat dalam hati We interact with men Not because nak gelinjar tengok biji mata dia And you all men You don't interact with women with such itchiness I call it Asal tengok aja women ni dah lain gelinjang No You treat with respect You forget gender That's why I say it should be gender blind Then you can get somewhere right Ini sekarang oh tak boleh meeting dua-dua Apa? Was-was Oh Allah Yang pergi meeting dalam bilik tu nak buat apa? Nak bincang ke nak bincang? No I'm serious See how minded kita Dulu we never thought about these things We argue, we debate why it is an issue oriented, not gender. But today, the more people have all this, the worse it is in terms of morality. And you must remember, all this is watched by people who want to invest here, you know. They kata, life is being made more difficult. Udah lah, you know, in the workplace macam-macam pula sekarang. Pakaian dijaga, padahal dia tak ada pun. Kita pula. Right? Ah, so please, you see, when our own work, uh, I mean, workplace become like that, people won't want to do business with this. And you must remember that there are three pillars in governance of a country. One is the political pillar. The political pillar is really about political governance. And today, the political governance dictates fairness. It dictates integrity, upholding of democracy as we define it. As a country uh, in this is part of the world, openness, transparency. These are the new dictates of democracy, which I subscribe to, and governing in the public interest, not governing for personal interest. So this is one pillar. The second pillar is economic pillar. I don't have to, to be labour on that. Suffice to say that the economic governance of today must understand the various economic interlinkages, whether bilateral, regional, or global. Unless governments understand that. Very difficult for business to see how they fit in into the policies that we create. If we lack that understanding, we'll have very parochial policies. And they're doing cross-border business. So it's important. That's why I said, if you can input to the government policies very early, you're doing the country a service. You are uh, in the area that can see this and can give uh, some inputs. For example, you have now the need to understand the role of the various stakeholders. I'm not just government. We are together in the country, right? Private sector, public sector together. So you must continue with the collaboration. And of course, you now have the new things like Industrial Revolution 4.0, all right? Which I'm told was already done, tapi tak ada announce. Already two years. So I told uh, the tone, I said, hey, it's ready. The officers are saying, when can we ni? don't want to announce? I don't know why. So it's ready. The K new KSU say it's ready to roll out anytime. It's done two years ago. Why? Everybody have come up. So people ask him, Malaysia, where are we? We're left behind. No, not really. But the staff, the, gov the, uh, sta the government staff don't understand why the political masters don't want to uh, launch it. Neither can I. So now I said, okay, you better get the new minister that been appointed last week, get it done. And then, of course, uh, in terms of regional integration. Uh, this is something that cannot be avoided. We cannot live alone in this country, uh, in our, unilaterally. 
So the uh, the multilateral integration is one, but the WTO is shaky now. But the plurilateral uh, integration, the regional integration, can be a, a booster of our economic resilience. And if we can put that in place, and we know where our place is, the private sector will see the real meaning of locating in Malaysia to serve the region. And uh, this is already ongoing, and it has to be accelerated. We cannot make enemies of everybody, really. And most importantly is really to talk about the human resources. Tadi I did say about the need, but we must now make sure the young understand what it is to be uh, competent, what it is to be efficient, what it is to be productive. These are lessons that must be drummed into their heads. We are worried. We call them the millennials. We call them uh, what IT is heavy. Not really lah. I'm not sure how many of the young can use those gadgets beyond WhatsApp, beyond taking photographs of what they ate, and then sending to friends, beyond FB, right? Beyond Instagram. I ask today, how many of you actually use your handphone for email? How many? Eh, dada, dada semua, tengok tu. Why? Must have computer. No, the Androids can serve. Betul tak? I carry, I got two phones. You know why? One breakdown, I got another one. Because my work is on the phone. I don't have an office. I'm chairman. A -A -A sounds very great. I don't. I only have a table and a chair there. Who wants to sit on the table and a chair? Tak payahlah. I can sit at the table and chair at home. So I go for meetings. Everything else is an email. Faster WhatsApp. Do chit chat with me lah. But update me, you know. Yeah. Not WhatsApp in forwarding some rubbish. Oh, okay, once in a while, you still like to know, kan? How many earrings, how many necklaces, <laughs> itu curiosity lah. Once that's over, back to emailing, forwarding, important things. What your competitors are doing, kan? Forwarding what the next competitor airline or whatever. Yeah. But ha actually, you ask our young, how many use this? Gadgets to really improve their performance in the workplace or in the university. I bet you some even don't even have email set up, you know. I know. They must have a computer to do it. But they don't realize that gadget is even better than a computer. It's so fast. You don't have to plug in anything, right? You don't have to mess up like that, buka, tutor, action. Go to Starbucks and do Actually, they're not doing anything much. They're doing some rubbish too, but on a bigger scale. <laughs> you know, uh, and then carry knapsack. <sighs> I don't have to carry knapsack. I have a bag. Inside, I got two phones. Both receive the same thing. In case one, you know, I'm very careless with my phones. I drop and crack. Because I have to work. I have to answer immediately, you know. Then I got from the plane. You ask her, uh, answer email. Datang, WhatsApp datang, not chit-chat. But these are things that I need to say. Okay, right, all right. Now, tambah, tambah, tambah. Because I don't want to delay. I was already one hour in the air. They might be thinking, hey, why so slow this young man? Because eh? I didn't tell them I was away. So, this is the new um, enthusiasm that you have to create amongst human resources. And you have the captive audience, you know. So, beyond everything, teaching the book techniques, and what, please talk to them about utilizing, optimizing. ICT uh, for their workplace work. And most importantly, innovation. I know people talk about innovation, blah, 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 fine. But let's create that kind of culture that motivates innovators to be disruptors. You know about disruption, right? Where people can create low-end disruption, new market disruption by bringing in new business models, by serving market segments that the previous players cannot serve because their business model is different. Like Air Asia and Mass. They are legacy airline, this different model business. We are different. So those millions who never travel by plane because they cannot afford, they're traveling now. Because our cost structure is different, our fare structure is different, and our business model is different. I'm just talking about one. There's so many disruptors now. We now must work towards that innovation being guided in order for them to become disruptors in the marketplace. Not domestic market alone, but regional and so on. And these are the future successful entrepreneurs who can actually bring 
a new perspective to everything. One new area is financial technology, fintech, as you know. Uh, fintech, never heard of before, right? Today, these are new platforms devised by young innovators to provide the same service like the old banks did, except that it is online, except that there is application uh, guided, and except that you don't need more, uh, brick wall, uh, brick, brick and mortar, and you don't need human interaction. Now you have fintech beyond payments, beyond transactions. Fintech is going into lending, leasing, and even raising funds. In other words, it's going to be that kind of financial business for the future. So the banks have set up and said, oh my, if we don't also follow and disrupt, we may be redundant. So now the banks are employing young people to do disruptive work. Of course, the word disruptive negative, but in this context, it's positive disruption, bringing markets forward uh, in the same area, tapi a new way of doing things, in line with what the young, the millennials need. I call it the click generation. Why? Uh, this is my copyright, you know, click generation. No, I, I said this uh, some months back, and there was a professor from America who actually was taking notes, and he added the tea. He says, I took notes of what you use, click generation. Because he's not heard of it. I said, yeah, you've not heard of it because you don't have my grandson. Well, my grandson, when he was about seven or eight, he was already into IT. He was really playing football. All right, he knows which player. Bukan cartoon, you know, real. It's like video, though. Yeah, yeah, penalty, God knows what. Already seven, eight years old. And I was just about to... Because I just retired, right? So I'm just about to go big into IT lah. So that everything can be email, can be day, can be that. I say, hey, can somebody set up? Okay, Grandma, I help you. Wow, see this little thing want to help me? Okay, what do I do? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now click. Click where? Nih, Grandma, click where? Here, there. After that, after that, you do this and then you click. Every other sentence, click, click, click. As I say, ah, yeah. Click generation. You know, can click lah to him is click lah, press whatever lah, go next ke, I click here, you click here. And it's so like breathtaking as far as I'm concerned. Oh my gosh. For them at that age, eight, nine years old, PowerPoint presentation is nothing, you know. My cucu, I know, first hand. The sister, who's only two years older than him. School holidays at that time. Uh, the auntie said, hey, you come and teach your cousin, who's kindergarten. Uh, just to keep them occupied, right? Uh, I'll give you $2 that they're there for each session. Measly some, but they don't really care for $2. It is the way I can devise something. So the mothers all went to work. They were left at home. And you know what this girl did? PowerPoint presentation. She did it her own. And, uh, you know, it's like, I can't believe it either, right? So the mother kept, mommy, you know what she did while we were all in the office? Teaching for $2. The cousin, kindergarten, impressed lah. Chuck, chuck, you know what? Her own style lah. But slight lah. No. So I have this uh, feeling that if we groom them young, the next generation of human resource, the next generation of entrepreneurs in Malaysia will be the ones that can keep up what's happening in the uh, world uh, environment. Yeah, and unless we play down this bahasa Melayu di mertabatkan, unless we play down all the nonsense, parochial thinking, we won't get there. Yeah, already, already when the first introduction of uh, IT, and uh, I remember doing this in cabinet. One day I got a shock of my life. There was an advertisement, Chakra Liut. And I went home and asked my daughter, apa benda cakara liut tu? And my daughter, of course, like me. Alah, mami, floppy disk. Oh, you also don't know. Ah. <laughs> floppy disk. Liut. Liut, floppy. Ha? The Japanese call it disku. Disku, disk. Flip it. So, I went to cabinet. Lah. Uh, sir, I just want to check with you. Does anybody here know what? Chakra liut mean apa ada? Mahdi, apa tu Mahdi kan? Apa ada? Chakra apa? Chakra liut. Nobody, not even education minister understood. Uh -huh. Chakra liut apa dia? 
floppy disk. What? I can hear in the sound of men. Floppy disk. Yeah. Dia orang bahasa. Huh? And then uh, rounding up. Apa dia? Rounding up. Bundar. Bahasa dari mana tu? Ya, yeah, dibundarkan. I was going to, uh, Thursday I'm going to Singapore to speak to OCBC. And I was going to quote some statistics. And I found everything Malay kan. Uh, apa ni statistiknya telah dibundarkan. I had to ask my daughter. Bundar tu apa? Rounding up kata ni. The same daughter lah who translated floppy disk for me. <laughs> and she saying it with you know like, ah, yeah, bundar. Why? Why? Do we need every word to be a Malay word? Tapi gymnasium kita panggil gymnasium juga. Geografi panggil geografi juga. Padahal ilmu bumi. Yang saya tahu dulu ilmu alam, ilmu bumi ingat. Oh tahu geografi tukar je F. See? Dah top sita B. Then create new words from nowhere. Dah lah floppy kawan. Jadi uh, cakar liut. Oh God. I know. One time dulu, Anwar, I hidup lagi Anwar tu. My student, Anwar. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. My, my student, my student, Anwar Ibrahim, my student. I remember he was finance minister. He came with the paper, the cabinet. Uh, the broker, broker, brokerage industry, you know, insurance broker industry. The officers, otak tarap pada. Dia tak baca. Obviously lah, kalau dia baca, dia dah faham kan? Barwa, barwa, barwa. Everywhere were barwa. Excuse me? Uh, so, tanya teman Is it the right word baru ni? Yang kawan tak baca kot. You can, normally kan sometimes we just let go je lah. Allah kan. Yang ni cikgu. So different sikit. Ni baru lah. Mana baru lah? Cik cik. Baru lah, baru lah, baru lah. Every word broker is baru lah. Astaghfirullahalazim. Can you, if you laugh. But we were not laughing. We were angry. Can you imagine sir, we government go to parliament. The, the, apa sah sahihnya isin Malay the bill kan bahasa Malaysia dia bertabak kan dia baru akan langsung no I'm not joking Allah is my witness the first time I realize lepas tu uh, kengkangan dah terkangkang pula dia in the same place baru ada kengkangan ni kengkang ni apa pula ni constraint halangan sudah lah kengkang bahasa apa ni dia bahasa ni tak faham sorry Maknanya, they just don't think. Ha? Constraint, halangan. Semenjak Tok Nenek kita halangan ni, dah terkengkang pula dia. Kengkangan, keng... barua. Barua is not exactly. Tukar. I said use broker. The whole world understand broker. Ha? Kenapa pula kita nak jadi barua ni? No, no I'm not joking. Uh, this is how when officers don't think. And this is industry, financial industry broker, you know, not real estate broker. Having to do with insurance. Barua insurance. <laughs> yeah! That's what it says, Barua insurance. You never heard because we killed it. <laughs> we killed it at the, at the cabinet meeting and told them, stop it. We killed it, literally, that's the day we killed the word Barua. If you're not alert, that would have gone, you know. And you can imagine the MPs telling the government, you stupid go menu. Yeah, the things that you never heard, we killed it there already. The one that we didn't know let through. Huh? Civet cat lah. Civet cat button kan? Baju cakap musang. Immigration, remember? Oh, you didn't know. Oh, oh you, at that time you were not, you're not in it. Yeah, immigration came up with a ruling on baju, formal. You can wear this kind of atas tu with a civet cap button. Baju cakap musang. Aduh. You know, civet cap musang. So, we all were so angry and upset. I had to text KSN because I was no longer in government. I said, please lah. Don't make fools of this country, you know. People, right? So, now, this is where human resource will have to be, right? And so, I would like to say that that is a uh, economic pillar, right? 
but the social cultural pillar is equally important. So you have the political, the economic, social cultural. This is about the people, the culture, the values, and we have to learn to accept diversity. Most people will say, "Let's tolerate." Excuse me, tolerate. There's a breaking point. Accept means all the carbuncles with all the warts, right? All the kekurangan kita terima. Jangan kita hanya tolerate aja. Satu hari so kita punya tolerance level gone. So in Malaysia, it is based on acceptance. To me, a poor person is poor. Poor Malay, poor Chinese, poor Indian, poor Kadazan, poor is poor by the definition. Correct? Underprivileged, color blind, gender blind. Now the moment we are able to get that into our social cultural pillar, Alhamdulillah, inshallah, this country will be on the right way. And I hope that when we talk about uh, the going moving forward now, we must have the three pillars being strengthened. We just don't want cosmetic changes. Yeah, the correct sikit kita tambah-tambah tak boleh. Have to check now. It's all strong. No plastering over the cracks. And there must be a new awareness that things must change. And we have to change, accept that those changes are necessary. But most importantly, when I talk the three pillars, the three pillars must be future-proof. Maknanya, it doesn't matter the, the year 318 ke apa benda ke, it's the same thing that can carry us through, strengthened over time. We do not want leadership for a season. We do not want governance for a season. It has to be future-proof. And uh, Tun Mahathir is the epitome of it, right? Leadership for those years, 15 years ago, going back to 1980, now the year 2018, still relevant. Because there were basic leadership characteristics in the person that can carry through whatever time. That's what every country needs. That's what Malaysia needs now. Political governance, economic governance, and social cultural addition that has future-proof characteristics. And of course, when you talk about uh, mindsets and so on, it has to be based on key principles and values that, again, must be future-proof. Honesty is future-proof. Integrity is future-proof. Correct? It's not like honest yesterday, different honest today. I no way. It's the same. So we can teach our young uh, this... Uh, key principles and values of this sense of accountability, sense of discipline, I, I am sure whatever being planned now can be implemented into the future, long after we are gone. That's what we want now. So thank you very much. You can ask questions. What's the time? Huh? OK, good. You know why? My clock, my, my new watch shows 1.15. <laughs> Battery come out. Okay, that's what I was thinking. One fifteen. Then they actually all to go in. I thought still one fifteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Uh, age before youth. I'm, I'm professor in this school. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. One of the things I was really concerned about when the new government came into office was Dr. Mahathir saying that not many educated people in Malaysia, and he was quite upset at the universities and. Where yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, I think you have to understand Dr. Mahathir first. Is I have been working with him since 76, right, to the day he retired. So I know already when he say like that, it is that, like me, uh, I say the same thing too. You can see what I was saying, right? all those words I use. It's our generation uh, that... Uh, I wouldn't say frustration, but it shows how much we care for things that are not right to be right. And sometimes we use these statements. I do. I say the stupid civil servants is wrong. The majority are good. But there is that group that reflects dishonesty, reflects, couldn't care less, right? So people of my generation, not necessarily in age, but in that generation of people who have served before, because we didn't go through all the nonsense, we begin to get exasperated. That's how Tun Mahathir, you go back and talk to him, he'll say, I know lah, but you know, geram. <laughs> he didn't say exactly geram, but I know what he's trying to express lah. I do, I tell him, you know. 
you can not lah stop every project kan nanti bergaduh pula dengan orang kan you know lah but that's how it is lah we don't like eh, eh, boleh diatur <laughs> when you have a bisa diatur culture you don't get angry you know you know what I mean bisa diatur means can be arranged when you deal with the culture that everything can be arranged there's no room for getting angry it's about pleasing you pleasing you you're about to upset okay okay how do i please you diplomacy that's not diplomacy that's not diplomacy far from it that's their interpretation of diplomacy i mean i don't suppose i come here everything is perfect oh yeah perfect yeah what for what for what benefit do you get try to please everybody and nobody is happy if you're doing it right there will be some people who are not happy why if you're doing it right you follow the regulations and the rules you follow the law and those who want to circumvent the law will be happy if you're doing it right then the ones who merit will get what it is so the ones who are don't merit but want it will be happy understand that's a rule don't try to please everybody because you're going to circumvent something i said to you not happy go to hell with you lah you don't marry it go to hell you hurt me right making this public statements can go to hell right jump in the lake eh what do i care <laughs> you know that right this is rafida haziz you know <laughs> jump in the lake apa dia I was retired long ago. No, you, uh, again. This is un- misplaced humility. Why? We have self-respect, you know. I'm nothing. I'm standing here nothing. Zero. What do I have? Nothing. Except you're a young professor. Nothing to it lah. Once in a blue moon I come, you know. What? Nothing? I'm not menteri, I'm not anything. Don't even belong to a party. I don't know, but maybe so lah. Now, why do you think if they do? Is it because I try to please everybody? No, some of you may hate me, but you... I, I don't know whether you listen to the PM, his statement tak? His press statement, you go back. The press statement he made, media, video, just after he swore in. After swearing in, And he went back, and there was all the world media there. And he went on for about 14 minutes. I don't know what he was talking. I didn't see it until people sent it to me. Because all the tang, 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 hundreds of messages. You see, oh, PM mentioned you, mentioned me. I said, I'm not watching. I'm too tired. You know, I'm doing some game. When game, when I want to divert attention, I play bubbles game, you know, gems. <laughs> you play game too? I play, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that takes my mind off. Then... I wondered what. So Tan Sri Ajit Singh, the former Secretary General, uh, Secretary General of ASEAN, my friend, see, he congratulated me. Wah, PM mentioned gue. I don't know Ajit. Okay, I'll send you the whole video. He taped it. And I saw. I said, oh God, I was shocked. After saying for 14 minutes, I don't know what he was talking lah about. You know. Then he says, people say I'm a dictator. But I listen to people, you know. And one person that I li- listen to is Rafida. You heard that, right? <laughs> ah, when I saw it, I said, oh God, now what? When she speaks to be heard, whether you like it or not. Correct or not? Yeah. I said, oh God, now what does that mean? He was not talking. He just suddenly, Rafida appeared on his mind, you know. And said, thank you for helping, blah, 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 blah. Then I realized it's because when I speak, I look at him as a person, perhaps he guides me, I also guide him because we are collectively responsible. He is my father's age. I always tell him, sir, you're my father's age, so I respect you like a father. But on this issue, ah, tu lain sikit. Kan? Kalau nak hormat tabik all the time, tak tegur, tak boleh tak? <laughs> Macam dia, you know. Tegur lah. I'm like anak. I accept 100%. Tapi kalau you tak betul, you're not right. I'm right. Because you know what you're 
Ya, precisely. Jangan buka mulut saya dengan ada je. Nak bergaduh dengan orang tua kan? Your boss pula tu. So, with that kind of uh, interaction, I think it's easier to guide each other, the cabinet, as to what needs to be done. There's no say yes sir, yes sir. Oh my, no way. No way, no way, no way, no way, yes sir, yes sir. No way, yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. I'm not a sheep. <laughs> Baba black sheep, right? No. Of course, there are people. I remember one day, this is, again, I might tell you what happened. He was a defense minister. He came out with a paper that certain uh, the general one certain section of the apa mindef many uh, military apa am forces in gen, uh, apa ni mindef kan there's air force mindef navy right but the mindef people more well, land forces they wanted something and of course he was a defense minister so he brought the paper signed it mahade and he said okay this paper this generals all want this one that uh, what do you all think wah oh, we agree agree yang tanya tadi lah bukan lelaki jantan Yes, agree, agree. Ini pasal Mahathir punya sign, Defense Minister. Uh, Mahathir is in nature, we have to agree what? According to them. Uh, what about you? Uh, no, I don't agree. Oh, siap. Lain tengok. Oi. Why ni dia? Paper PM. Sir, I don't agree because, one, if you want to give the to the uh, land forces, the Air Force and the Navy will have to be considered together. Parity. You cannot discriminate one arm or another. They are all together, armed forces. So you have to redo this if you want to agree give. But if you want to agree a give to the three apatabam branches, wow, the cost to the country will be fantastic lah. The numbers are very big. If the cabinet say we want to give, then redo the costing, and you see how much it is. We can afford or not. Then dia, then he said, ada lagi, tak ada. Sebenarnya saya tak setuju. Saya setuju dengan Rafidah. But I brought it here simply because I thought I want to give the general a second hearing. I could have vetoed it at my end there without even coming to the cabinet. I would have just told the general, no, 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 no. No need. He can. But he said, dah malah, bring to the cabinet, at least see what you all see. So are you all agreeable? Uh, no lah sir, if you don't agree, we you don't agree. <laughs> the sheep in the flock. There you are. But you have to know why. So you must be brani. Do not see your position, my position. Your position is being right. That's the best position to me. Not who you are. If you are right in whatever you are doing and deciding, that is it. That is your validation for your decision. We have to remember that, you know, whether it's in companies, whether in politics, whether anywhere. Being right. Meaning that right by any standard, nobody can say, yeah, yeah, this is not right, not wrong. Then your conscience is very clear. Lah. Betul tak? What comes out of your mouth is clear. No malice, eh? I mean, come on. Maybe your friend. Don't tell me every friend of yours you must uphold and say, yeah, I agree lah, because you're my friend. Since when has friendship come to the Oh, adik beradik. Alah, please lah. Your brother not right, not right lah. Your sister not right, kan? Like, it doesn't mean you hate your sister. You don't like what he's doing, kan? That's why don't be personal about it. Just be objective. I can have the worst argument with someone and yet afterwards we can go and play golf, you know? Because we're not be personal. So this is what I'm trying to say. Don't ever say that. Allah, you know, kami ni apa. I have scolded members of the public, you know, in the hospital, one woman. You kerja kat mana? Saya ni guru sabuk je. Ya. Guru cabuk means like lousy teacher. I was waiting for a doctor. She waiting for a doctor. Excuse me. Why are you talk, talking about your son guru cabuk? No? You are educating people's children. Can you imagine how disappointed the parents are if they know that you don't have regard for your... Oh. I lectured outside the doctor's <laughs> office to a total stranger. Now you tell me, whoever do that? I do. I did. 
And she uh, said sorry to me. Don't say sorry to me. Rethink. No, rethink about yourself, about your self-respect. In Sweden, it is the number one job. Master's degree pula tu nak apply. Punya selection process. And you call yourself guru cabut. I pity those parents who send the children to you, you know. How much commitment can you give? Cik, my lecture. I said, and then I went home. I said, oh, what did I do? <laughs> I oh, such a busy body, but then I am doing a service lah for the 35 students in the class. Betul tak? Buku cabut, dia kata diri dia. My God, silap hari bulan. But then there are people who say, ha ha ya, kita ada guru cabut ya. Oh, ten guru cabut tutup lah sekolah. No, that's why exasperation comes in now. You talk about Tun Mahathir, lepas itulah. Exasperation. I look at me, talking kan? Why do you think I say that? Oh, no, it's aspiration. Because this education, you're training young children. You don't have regard for yourself. What kind of commitment are you going to give? Dulu our teachers, oh my God, they're like demigods. Betul tak? I, correct not our teachers? My teacher from 6, she, he turned 80, he wanted Rafidah to go and give the speech. Because I must have made an impact little kan. When I was young, my teacher, Married, and he told me, the first child is named after you. He must have looked at this girl ni, you tak boleh main ni kan? I better, and I hope my daughter turn out to be like you. I feel like telling him, please don't pray for that lah. <laughs> you might regret it. But the thing is, you know, agak jadi impact lah. Kita kecil, you know, stand up one, two, three, four kan? I don't know what I was saying and talking and dia agaknya, dia impressed. Primary. So, what I'm saying is, please be proud yourself, okay? Don't talk about his position. What? You think the higher the position, the better the person? No. Ni, inside here. Okay? Lagi, ada apa lagi? Yes, yes, yes. Two questions, actually. Because for me, this Pakata Harapan is so beautiful. No, don't say like that. Tak ada beautiful, nothing beautiful about it. The question is, you know, we, Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, let me put this way. Did you know that the national language of Singapore is Malay? But did anybody say why Malay? In Malay only berapa persen aja. We are all Chinese. Did any Chinese in Singapore ever question? No. Having a national language and then topping it up with a uh, day-to-day uh, -day operational language is the best thing, right? No, kat sini tak boleh. Kita majority Melayu, kita kenalan Melayu. La ilaha illallah. You're making yourself more parochial. Well, that's why Singapore is like that. Dia punya Perdana Menteri, dia buat ucapan dia Malay, lepas tu dia translate into English. Kan, dia continue in English. I dulu masa BT, ya Allah, the press. Pergi tell my press secretary, why is she always talking in English? Eh, tell those bloody idiots, ah. Huh? I was opening a Japanese factory, you know. Udahlah, Japanese tu tak faham uh, English pun. Cakap tak Melayu. At least he has interpreter. Nak cemen kamu on the way punya pen, eh. Nya, 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 I know he's interpreting, interpreting what I'm saying. Into English lah. Takkanlah sampai triple level, layer pula. I'm opening his factory, I'm trying to tell him, you know, please op expand, nye, 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 kan, trying to encourage him to invest lagi-lagi tambah. Wah, oh, press ni sibuk, I'm not talking Malay. Ha, dia sebab kata dia nak bertabakkan negara. No, I'm, you know, I get very, I'm angry lah, tell, uh, so dari bloody lah keluar kan, tell, uh, tell those bloody media yang mengada-ngada ni. Most of them are fine, it takes only one or two. And this one or two who were right. You know, Menteri tak mahu cakap orang putih, tak mahu cakap Melayu, nak cakap orang putih. Aduh. 
And this are when we send them for negotiations, they dare not utter a word because they cannot express themselves on concepts or whatever, right? So we lose out lah. So we have sent the more senior. So the people have to be taken. I, I could go to cabinet and say, excuse me, please don't send your junior officers. They give me high blood pressure. <laughs> huh? You know one in Canada, we had a meeting, APEC. I mean, I'm a Uruguay round though. Uh, it was uh, Canada hosted. We had lunch, luncheon meeting. Ministers lunch meeting. We have to solve everything by, by afternoon. Ministers lunch meeting, officers lunch meeting. One idiot from uh, Ministry of Primary Industries, the Deputy Secretary General, didn't come for the meeting. So my staff rush. And the rep from the community started at the lunch. Ni. Why? Tak tahu dia datang. Uh, of course, I cannot ask a girl boy to go and uh, knock on the room. Lantak call lah kan? So I said, okay. After the meeting, find out where did he go. Sakit ke? Mati ke? I don't know. Pergi. You know what he said? Makanan tak halal. I said, you're not supposed to eat lah them. I'm so mad, right? It's called a luncheon meeting, but you're not supposed to eat like a, like a pig there, right? You're supposed to... Because time tak ada, so sambil makan tu bercakap lah. Tak payah makan, tak apa. It's not compulsory. Dia boleh cakap dengan my staff. Deputy Sergeant, pergi cabinet, siap. Hey, Ken Yik, don't ever send that idiot anymore to follow my delegation. Why? He didn't attend the luncheon meeting, very, very important. Even the ministers simultaneously at luncheon meeting so that we can sort it out. And your staff said, Dal, makanan tak halal. You see? Now you tell me. Tak kena sakit hati kan? Ni kan ada ni. Now you tell me. And I have ambassadors. The minister meraihkan I lah dengan delegation. Our ambassador. Duk kat ceruk tu ha. Kat curtain tu. Kenapa dia buka situ pula? So, uh, panggil pegawai. Kenapa duta to not here with me, with the minister? So that, you know, dengarlah minister ni. Kenapa? Trade minister, you ambassador kat sini. <coughs> Oi, kan orang ni kan semua makanan tak halal. Minum-minum ni. You tak payah minum. Lepas tu kena lecture lah. Not there lah. Balik kat tu. You are there as a rep of the agong and the country. You gonna stay here, I balik. So you should be asking questions of this minister, you know. Ada ke benda yang nak kita tahu kan, nak report balik. You sebok dengan ada alkohol. You pun minum buat apa? I tak minum alkohol tadi. Yang pergi sebok koktel dia tu, terharam dia. I pun tak makan. Correct? But do I go and make say, Eh, hey, all your food not halal, you know, so I'm not going to talk. You see, the kind of excuse. I need real sorry, you know. This is the kind of pressure. So you now you understand. Exasperation. Ah. Long explanation. But you understand. It's not like, mm, apa ni, Tun Mahathir, it's like, no, no. It's because understanding that it should not be the way it is. You can see an example here lah. The words I use. Of course, he doesn't use those words lah. He's more polite, more refined. Eh? But uh, I'm coarse, okay. Alright, lagi? Come. Sila, no problem. And streaming, sorry, streaming civil service. There's no streaming actually, but the people who want to go into civil service immediately kan? I think the it's always been like, okay, like go civil service ni, my qualification may not fit there. You know, I'm more into business area, uh, private sector. Because most of the civil service ni are the main thing lah. Usual lah, you know, arts, degree like that, traditionally. And it's also now. People with a business and all that don't want to work in government. Unless they're bonded. By scholarship, I don't want you to go out, right? Yeah, it's like that. They find more of potential outside. Yeah, Sila, sorry. Yeah. Hello, uh, I'm a student here from Foundation in Management. Um, nowadays, young generation like us, we are, we are influenced by the sound of... Why are you removing your mic? They might lose your mic. You are shy of your mic? No, no, I'm not shy. Okay, okay. just speak to the mic. Can you not hear you? Um, some of media can influence us as a young generation. So, I want, when, I, when I come back from this 
for this uh, this talk, I want to share with my uh, friends what I get, uh, what I got from here. So, uh, we as the young generation, what we should do, and of course, we we are not have chance to contribute. Uh, you know, like uh, in last PRU, like uh, people can vote. You know, uh, then what we what we can do. Now, why do you blame the media? No, wait. You said you are influenced by the media. Why do you go and read that media? <laughs> I have stopped subscribing to all the media. You know that? Three years ago. So my uh, newspaper vendor no more business from me. Tidak dulu beli tiga sekali. Star, Utusan, Berita Harian. Tiga, tiga. The moment they begin, uh, you know, you know when I stop? In 2015, late 2015, August, I wrote, so for the, I think I'm the first, I was the first person, you all don't know this, because I was a columnist of Tusa Malaysia. Every Sunday I wrote, that particular Sunday, August 26th, I wrote on 2.6 billion donation. I said, what donation? This 2016, okay? Donation apa? Arab mana ni? Tu banyak sangat tu apa kuih proko ni yang kita terpaksa bagi ni. Blah, 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 blah. Other questions. And then I went to hospital. There's stomach surgery. So I had tubes protect, uh, coming up from my stomach. You know, urine tube, blood tube. You name it lah. Oh, they dangling like that. You know? <laughs> tak boleh buat apa. And then I got the text in my phone. The editor. With the tears emoticon. I'll tell you about media. And kata, I'm so sorry, Tazri. You know, your, apa ni, your article on the 2.6 billion vetoed by PMO. I asked my daughter, the PMO ni apa benda ni? <laughs> Prime Minister's office. Ah, okay. They vetoed. So we cannot print. Oh, kepala hotak kau. <laughs> I was straddled, okay? Surgery. Major. So, I took the phone. I can only manage the phone lying down lah. Yeah, I cannot move like that. Like that can. That also the doctor was watching. Say, what's happening? What are you doing? I'm doing my Facebook. <laughs> and he can't stop me, you know. <laughs> he can't stop me. Just make sure that your tubes are not, uh, your uh, needle are not bengkok. You know, after you bleed. Nah, okay, no problem. So stretch it out so that it's not bengkok, kan. And then I just text to Sina Harian, Ishamuddin, I've been vetoed, ni, 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 ni. You want to produce, I give you full permission. Dua hari lepas tu keluar whole front page in my picture this size. That was the start of my crusade. Imagine vetoing an article expressing concern and all that. What have you got to hide? My mind began started thinking, right? If it's all innocent, jawab je lah. No need to jawab. It's just an article newspaper. Columnist. Vito tak bagi print I text immediately to editor From this moment on I am no longer your columnist <laughs> Habis cerita And then okay, exasperation lah Then my son who is into IT That's why the son was so like that right He's not an IT man He's just an accountant but he's into IT Then kita mami I tell you what You can still express your opinion lah I do a, a FB blog for you I thought FB ni only for people what I ate today, mi goreng, <laughs> mi rebus. I said, like that with FB, I've got no time. No, 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 no. This is in a Facebook, but you can write whatever you like. And you don't even need for people to be friend-friend. Oh, okay, fine. So what do I do? Ini lah click generation pula datang bapak dia. Okay, I'll do everything for you now. What do you want? Which photo you want? Okay, tak payah foto lah. I want this a flag, mission flag. Uh, what do you want to call yourself? Rafi Dazi, Malaysian citizen. Ni tengah terlantang ni. Eh? Adi pun buat lah. Okay, now uh, you can just post. How do I post? Um, how, what? Uh, ni kan ada post ni ha. Primary post. Okay, write whatever you like. And then kalau nak buat gambar, uh, you just press your gallery lah. Uh, like within 10 minutes dapat lah kan. Wah, lying down there. With all the tubes I was doing posting. How my Facebook blog started. Out of exasperation for being vetoed. That's how I started questioning. What is this? Okay, talk about your media. Then 
balik rumah to my daughter cancel all the main media these are all mouth pieces i call them you want to men, apa uh, minda rakyat membina minda rakyat bina macam ni ke you want to guide how they feel right? king mil jung buatlah north korea kim jun on or whatever you call him you see ah talk about media so i stop So don't say, you know, you are being guided, whatever might influence by media. Why you allow them to influence you? Why? Answer me. Why? Why blame the media? You have that power to read or not to read. What rubbish you want to read? All facts. Some, sometimes the rubbish entertaining lah. Entertaining value. Some are factual. So don't blame me dia. Nobody force you to read. Correct. Remember that. So I rather read some apa namanya uh, apa uh, media not asing or what but media that is uh, yeah about fintech. I read you know how do I know? I'm asked to talk about alamak surveyors. Future proofing the surveying profession. Allah. I got to learn about surveying. Cross border business. I retired long ago already. But I don't have to read media. Like I go into research. Using my phone. Not computer. Right? The latest articles written by God knows professor mana ke on certain thing. Not his, his, not his thinking. I'm talking about facts. What is this? What is this? Well, how it is that? You know this very factual research. That I read. Not the nonsense about adulation, you know, about the anugerah Allah thing. Hello, apa khabar? We see you later. Okay. Ah, okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, no, but wait, you asked tadi what can we do? First thing you can do is improve your own self because when you improve yourself, you add better value to the organization. That's the big, biggest contributor you can make. Contribution rather, yeah, okay. Okay, thanks, Sri. I'm Herman from Oya JSB. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. We really uh, entertain your your talk just now. So you uh, a few times that you keep mentioning about the officers in the civil servant, they are not performing well. They cannot communicate in English, and then uh, more or less about uh, their attitude and things like that. But uh, in other words, uh, you are also complaining about the product of our education system. So that contribute to the product that you're facing now. They are not capable of doing this. They are not capable of not doing that. Not all, but yeah. when they are in key areas and they cannot, that's serious lah. I did say that. Yeah, okay. So uh, is there something that we can do and uh, propose to the uh, Pakatan Harapan to that, so that they can rectify and do something and improve it? Actually, to wait for Pakatan Harapan is another thing. Like you have leadership in the education system itself. You know, you have leadership in the ministry, leadership in every institution. Now you have um, surplus, I would say, of uh, private universities. I could not believe when I read the statistics, berapa ratus private colleges and polytechnic, 400 something. 454, 490 now. Huh? 498. I could not believe it because I was going to to have a discussion dengan the Prime Minister about education one on one. I said, what is this, sir? 400 plus, you know, and because I can I cannot believe it. It's a small little country, and true enough, just walk or uh, drive around Kuala Lumpur up on the shop house is university, second floor, first floor. I asked my driver, kat mana masuk universiti? Universiti, kata dia dengan driving. Tu belah kiri je tengok kat traffic light dekat. Kat universiti kat atas. Ha, ha, kata dia. dia pun cengang. You know, I mean like, ha? Huh? Universiti on the first floor of a building. Uh, entrance by staircase. How on earth did they get license to do university? No. Already wrong there lah. To get accredited as university, there must be some basic criteria. Below which you don't consider. Doesn't matter who uh, wants to operate it, right? Takkan on the shop house, please lah. 
What kind of university? Dia pakai certificate lah Not worth the paper It's written on obviously So there it starts already And then you have to Both ends you kena jaga ni Here you must make sure that only Certain people uh, criteria Can apply For university, for polytechnic or whatever Be Below that, sorry Like hospital lah Can you imagine I want to open private hospital I just employ anybody I like And then you go there for offer surgery what kind of credibility, right? That's what's happening lah. In, in our, our hospital, no, I'm talking about um, universities and polytechnics, all right. Then, to start a kind of meritocracy in culture, you have to start from the beginning lah. The, at the Tarika. Have you seen some of the Tarika in my kawasan? I know, because I, I go to the grassroots. You know, every time I go to the Tarika, I want to cry because I feel, oh my God, these are the future. Very little future left. Because these girls, you know, Tadika below five, right? Below six. All but Tudong already. You know, they haven't even seen life yet, you know. Tudong first. And they are singing Nasheed. Okay, nothing wrong with singing Nasheed except what they are singing. Ingatlah kamu akan mati esok. Jagalah, abalah. You know, it's like, please remember you're dying tomorrow, you're going to die tomorrow, so today be good. That child is four and a half, five years old, don't even know what ESO is all about. And he or she, and she, they are both boys and girls, telling us in the audience, grandmothers, remember, no tomorrow die. So is that what you nurture them to talk about, to think about, not tomorrow, uh, be, you know, fighting for the nation, be proud of the nation, tada. Hasil ke mati dia kerja. Now that's not the right thing to do. Other tadikas are talking about, you know, enjoying life, right? Doing all kinds of work that creative. Ah, ha? tadi sukat tu tu tak bersukan lah. Kau pakai short lah kawan tu. <laughs> kan? How can you go sukan berjubah? Now I'm talking about the culture ni. So that child will go to school with that mentality lah. That mentality, it carries. No matter how the teacher tries to change. Too bad, cannot change already. Being self, apa ni, by, by herself, by himself. Isolated. Isolated, isolationist. Yeah, yeah. Isolated and then not only that, huh? Isolated cases. Apa dia? I'm just saying when you when this is replicated everywhere, it becomes a culture. All you need to do is start. Everything starts with one, you know. It grows in but ten years. I'm not it, asking about religion. I'm saying yeah. you don't teach a four and a half year old child to sing something about tomorrow <laughs> is death. Remember, you know that's not it. Kalau kata let us study hard. Let us be good for, you know, menjadi asset negara. E, of course, our religion is a developmental. But this ustazah, whoever, the kindergarten teacher, decide to talk about, I teach the child about, remember, we die tomorrow. So I told them, I told them. Yeah, I told them. Tak salah ajar budak-budak ni, dia baru nak hidup. See, so that's why, I mean, the culture will have to be looked tackled in. That is the formal system. The informal kat rumah. The nurturing by parents. It has to combine. Dulu when our time, parents kat rumah and reinforced by the school, teachers. Then it strengthens the values. If kat rumah, mother, father clap to. Kat sekolah, teachers too many things to do kan. How can the child grow up? Yeah, it, it's about nurturing. Nurturing and education are two different things, you know. Nurturing, there are no books. Education, yes. So don't forget. And when we talk about young children, it's both nurturing and combination and education combined. You educate, no problem. Nurturing yang susah ni. The brilliant of minds can become the worst of crooks. Okay, last question. 
Yes. Yes. Oh, that one night I need three hours uh, to talk. <laughs> no, it's just that we know where uh, our strengths lie, in what areas uh, of uh, exports, what areas of manufacturing services, is to promote them. And we have a lot, a lot of uh, upper namanya, mechanisms in place, bilateral FTAs in ASEAN, bilateral one-on-one, uh, -on -one, regional grouping, Outside of ASEAN, ASEAN plus three, ASEAN plus six. Semua ni kita dah ada in place. So if the private sector can be assisted to take advantage of the new markets that's opened up for us and new investment areas that others can identify in Malaysia to invest in areas that we are strong, that we just continue lah. Tapi I'm not sure whether people are actually focusing on those things or they're just leaving it to the private sector. So that... As I've said earlier, the facilitator, remember my first few words? That the government must come back to do. Be the facilitator of private sector endeavor because it's the government is not in business, should not be in business. I was chair of uh, Minister for Public Enterprise for seven years. There were 950 plus companies owned by government, state and gov federal. In the end, we closed the ministry. Because my policy is government should not be in business. There were a lot of pilferage. None of them success, success story. So we closed down. Offer at one dollar as a pendak, right? Because the liabilities were huge. But most of them just simply wind down, habis. Some kita segah with state government. You re, re, apa? Uh, redo, restructure. So the, and the ministry was closed down. Yeah, I believe in it. Imagine government servants doing business. What is this? You guide them, right? Okay, Abyss. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yang Berbahaya Tantri, for such cogent and thought-provoking insights. As a token of appreciation and gratitude, we cordially invite Yang Berbahaya Datuk Sri BC to present a memento to our distinguished uh, adjunct professor yang berbahagia Tan Sri. Oh. Come. Bawah.